Say the line! Here's some new sunscreen reviews. Yay! It's Michelle of Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD, Cosmetic Chemist, and Sunscreen Connoisseur. Star Korean asked me to review a bunch of popular Korean sunscreens for this sponsored video because most of you are heading into summer in the Northern Hemisphere and they've kindly put all of the sunscreens I'm talking about today on sale. All the links are in the description if you want to check them out. Conveniently, I'm heading out of summer, so I've actually been trying out tons of sunscreens, and there are some really nice ones in this batch, including a few that you've probably seen hyped up tons on social media. I firmly believe that there is the perfect sunscreen out there for everyone, but it can be a bit of a journey to get there. My top tips for buying sunscreens that you will probably enjoy are, firstly, check out reviews from people with a similar skin type as yours. My skin is oily and dehydration prone and also pretty prone to clogged pores and hyperpigmentation. If your skin is similar, there is a good chance that we'll like similar sunscreens and probably similar skincare products in general. Tip number two, I really recommend writing down a list of sunscreen needs and wants. And every time you come across a sunscreen that sounds good, check it against every item on that list. This is a really good way of making sure you don't get swept up in the hype and completely forget about a massive deal breaker. If you don't like the way a sunscreen feels on your face, then don't forget that you can use it up on your neck, your hands, and the rest of your body. I think us skincare nerds tend to forget about everything below about here, so it is a good way to show some love to the poor neglected areas. I also made a video recently answering all of the common questions that I get about sunscreens, so make sure you check that video out as well. On to our sunscreens. I'm going to start with my favourite because I am not good at keeping the good things until the end, the beauty of Chosun Relief Sunrise and Probiotics. This is a sunscreen that's SPF 50 plus and PA with four pluses, which is as high as you can go for SPF and UVA protection in Korea. The SPF rating has been certified by two separate labs in Korea and Spain. Testing in two different labs in two different countries was one of the ways I recommended for getting a reliable SPF rating in my video on the SPF apocalypse of late 2020. So it's nice to see this being done and this info being shared publicly. This sunscreen is made by Colmar, a big sunscreen manufacturer in Korea that has a great reputation for making really effective sunscreens. In fact, all four of the sunscreens I'm talking about today are manufactured by Colmar. They've become really popular post SPF apocalypse. I think a lot of brands have become rightfully nervous about their sunscreen formulations, which makes perfect sense. All four sunscreens are also actually approved and sold as UV protective sunscreen functional cosmetics in Korea, although they're not approved in the US or Australia or a bunch of other countries. Adil Manoa talks a lot about the Korean beauty industry on her channel, and to make sure your Korean sunscreen is actually approved in Korea, she recommends checking two things. Firstly, that the term functional cosmetic shows up on both the tube and on the box of the sunscreen. Secondly, that it's actually sold in Korea. So for example, you can look up the Korean website of the brand and check that it's available there. I've checked this for all four of the sunscreens I'm talking about today. Out of them, the Beauty of Chosen sunscreen is my favourite. This is a chemical sunscreen with newer filters and it has a very nice light texture like a hydrating gel moisturiser. It's not greasy at all, it sinks into skin very quickly and it is very hydrating. This sunscreen has very little white cast, it doesn't show up on Glow by Ramon who has mediumish brown skin, but it can show up on moderately darker skin tones like Glow Skin Guys. Even though it is a chemical or organic sunscreen, it has MBBT in it, which is an insoluble organic filter. And those solid particles can sometimes give a white cast on skin that's on the darker side. It has no fragrance and no alcohol if those are problems for your skin. And it's designed to be super cosmetically elegant and it works really well under makeup. It's also designed to wash off easily, which is great if you're worried about clogged pores but it does mean that it's not going to stay nicely spread out on your skin if you're sweating or moving around a lot. So keep that in mind when you use it. The key skincare ingredient in here is rice, which is a pretty popular ingredient in Korean skincare. It's meant to be great for hydration and for sensitive skin. The packaging says it has 30% rice extract and 1000 parts per million rice germ extract, as well as three probiotic rice ferments. There are also a bunch of other plant extracts in there as well, along with niacinamide, which is great for soothing skin and helping with brightening. There's also glycerin, which is an incredible hydrating humectant, 
which is one of my favourites, and adenosine, which is an anti-wrinkle active. Beauty of Choson has some other products that I really like as well. They have a great cleansing balm and a bunch of nice serums with a mix of traditional Korean hanbang ingredients like ginseng, rice, propolis, as well as more modern ingredients like niacinamide and snail mucin. I recommend checking them out if you're in the market for some new products. Mary and May Sika Soothing Sun Cream is next, and this seems to be a very similar formula to the Beauty of Chosen sunscreen. It has the same sunscreen actives and base ingredients in a similar order, but different skincare ingredients and a touch of fragrance. Mary and May is a brand I haven't heard of before, but they're a clean Korean brand with a core brand philosophy of being 16 free and using only EWG green grade ingredients. EWG green grade seems to be a pretty common claim for Korean products now. I'm guessing what it means is that all of the ingredients are rated at 3 or below in the EWG's completely unscientific and pretty darn arbitrary rating system. I've talked about why clean beauty is BS before in this video. Anyway, as you'd expect, this has a very similar texture to the Beauty of Chosen sunscreen. The differences are mostly with the skincare ingredients as well as a light, slightly floral fragrance that goes away pretty quickly after you apply it. It's been tested to be hypoallergenic, and like the Beauty of Chosen sunscreen, it's formulated to work really well under makeup as an everyday commuter sunscreen. In terms of the skincare ingredients, the Beauty of Chosen sunscreen focuses on rice, whereas this focuses on centella, which you probably guess from the Sika name. Centella is great for soothing sensitive skin, I love using Sika products when my skin is irritated and needs a bit of nourishment. This sun cream has 10,000 parts per million or 1% F Sika complex, which has seven different centella extracts and fermented yeast. It's meant to be soothing and hydrating. It also has niacinamide and adenosine, which is why this is also a whitening and anti-aging functional cosmetic in Korea on top of being a sunscreen. I talked about this ingredient pairing before in my Hamish video. The Beauty of Chosen sunscreen has this niacinamide and adenosine pairing too, but it doesn't have this extra functional cosmetic claim. I'm not sure why, but it could explain why the Mary and May sunscreen has a higher regular retail price. Next up we have the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. I've talked about this before, this is a chemical or organic sunscreen with a relatively heavier texture compared to a lot of Korean sunscreens. It's super popular, it has no white cast, no fragrance and no alcohol, and it's recommended for dry and sensitive skin. Like the other two, it's SPF 50 plus and PA with four pluses. And also like a lot of other Korean sunscreens now, they have the independent testing on their site to verify these ratings. And this one has it from the Korean Institute of Dermatological Science. This is also approved as a whitening and anti-wrinkle functional cosmetic, again because it's got that niacinamide and adenosine combo. On top of that, this also has eight types of hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is used in skincare as a humectant that grabs onto water and keeps it on and in your skin. But a lot of people complain that it can feel like it dries your skin out. I think this is because a lot of products use only one size of hyaluronic acid, so it all might stay on the surface of your skin and it feels like it dries into a film. To avoid these, a lot of products, including this one, now use a range of sizes of hyaluronic acid to hydrate your skin at different depths, so it feels a bit more like well-rounded hydration. There are a bunch of other skincare ingredients in this as well, like astaxanthin, centella, and ceramide. The Isentree website recommends this for outdoor activities, but it isn't officially water resistant. So I don't think you should rely on this for like hardcore exercise, but I do think it is probably going to hold up better to movement and sweat compared to your average Korean sunscreen. This is also recommended for reapplication over makeup, which I've talked about before. I recommend using a cushion puff sponge for this. It's also been tested for skin irritation and it passed with flying colors. Unfortunately on their page, they also show EWG ratings for every ingredient in it, which I thought we moved past as a species, as well as the sunscreen infographic that's not quite right. It says chemical sunscreens need 30 minutes to absorb before working, which is a bit silly because it's not true. And this is a chemical sunscreen, so they're pointing out a fake disadvantage for their own product. They also show a video of it absorbing UV immediately under a UV camera. So yeah, don't think that chemical sunscreens need a longer waiting time. They have the same waiting time as a physical sunscreen. You just need it to dry down and form a nice continuous layer that doesn't move around too much before you go out into the sun. I quite like the sunscreen, even though it's recommended for sensitive and dry skin and my skin is oily. 
Isntree also have a stick sunscreen that's recommended for oily skin that I'm pretty keen to try as well. The last sunscreen I'm talking about today is the Innisfree Intensive Long Lasting Sunscreen X. I had to try that three times, that is a tongue twister. I'm pretty excited about this one because like the rest of the sunscreens, this is SPF 50 plus and PA with four pluses, but the special bit is that it's actually water resistant. It's recommended for surfing and playing in the water. Thanks to Dilma Not Again, my Korean beauty insider info guru, water resistant in Korea means that the SPF drops by less than 20% after 40 minutes in water during that water resistance test. This is less strict than the Australian and the US standards. They need the sunscreen to stay at the full SPF after water exposure, but it is stricter than the EU one, which lets it drop to half the SPF. I'm pretty sure this is the first water resistant Korean sunscreen that I've ever tried. Unsurprisingly, it is quite heavy in texture for a Korean sunscreen, but it is a lot lighter than a typical Western water resistant sunscreen. Sunscreens that are water resistant usually have a lot of polymers and thicker, oilier ingredients to keep it in place when your skin gets wet. So you usually end up with more of a noticeable feeling on your face. This is a pretty unique sunscreen in my sunscreen library. It works well for those in-between situations where you might want a smoother, lighter sunscreen that sits nicely under makeup, but you're also going to get like a bit moist. Like maybe you're going on a boat ride at a wedding or something. I don't know your life. I really like that Korea has a standard for their water resistant label. There are a few Japanese sunscreens I've tried that I really liked that claim to be water resistant, but unfortunately, as far as I know, there isn't a standard for water resistance in Japan. So unless the brand describes how they tested their claim, you just don't really know how much you can rely on that. If you have recommendations for water resistant Korean sunscreens, please leave them in the comments. So this is a combination sunscreen that uses a mix of both organic and inorganic UV filters. It has a slight white cast that mostly goes away as the sunscreen settles down. I would expect that this might not be great for dark skin tones. I'm guessing that white cast is from the zinc oxide and or the titanium dioxide. This sunscreen doesn't have alcohol in it and it has a hydrating feel with a slightly oily finish that's a bit more noticeable than with other Korean sunscreens. The scent is floral and moderately strong, which Innisfree says is from a low allergen fragrance. Based on the reviews I found online, most people don't have eye sting with this, but a few people do. Eye sting is quite individual and not everyone gets stinging from the same products and ingredients. So for most people, this is probably fine. One last thing, I do have to mention this Coral Reef Friendly logo because it is on the front. I'm not a fan of this label, especially coming from a product that I'm pretty sure isn't being sold near any coral reefs. I've talked a lot about this whole reef safe marketing in previous videos, but the concentrations of sunscreens that were found to damage corals in studies so far are well below the concentrations that have been measured in the wild. The ocean is massive and it mixes around a lot, so sunscreen washing off into the ocean really doesn't seem like a big issue compared to everything else that coral reefs are facing, unless you are basically touching the coral. Here, it just seems to mean that it just doesn't have oxybenzone and octanoxate. Those are the two ingredients that were banned in Hawaii following a study that was pushed very heavily in the media. But this sunscreen actually does have nano zinc oxide and nano titanium dioxide, which were both found to damage coal at, again, unrealistically high concentrations. I don't think the evidence shows that it's a real issue for any sunscreen ingredient, but I think if you're a brand using that in your marketing, you should be holding it to a consistent standard. They did recently change their packaging to a white tube without this reef logo. So that's pretty encouraging. So keep that new packaging in mind as well if you have trouble finding this. All of these sunscreens are on sale at Star Korean at the moment. The links are in the description. Make sure you check them out if you're looking for a new sunscreen. If you found this video useful, click the like and please consider subscribing and joining the notification squad. Also make sure you check out my other videos on sunscreen and skincare which should be popping up next to me now.